Hello guys, it's Drew. So the Encourage Gates opening event started on July 28th for many people. Some people open their gates right away. Me personally on Grobulus, our gates just opened on yesterday, which is August 21st. So it took us about three weeks to complete the event. Um, it was a lot of fun. I hope you all enjoyed it. It was a great part of Classic WoW history. Pretty laggy but it still was a lot of fun. But with Encourage being released, that means a lot of amazing gear comes out for Shadow Priest. This is a huge um, phase for us, a huge jump in power level, a lot of best in slot game pieces available now for us in Encourage. And also there are some new consumables and enchants that I will be going over as well. So this is going to be a little lengthy video because I am going to cover everything that is to know about Shadow Priest in Phase 5. So let's get right into it guys. First thing I'm going to go over are the new consumables and enchants available for us with this phase. Um, they are pretty good and they give us a decent spell power boost. So that is why I'm going to go over them. The first, um, it's the only consumable added, but it is a, a new consumable and it is a weapon consumable for casters. So uh, for those of you who don't know what that means, melee has like sharpening stones that they can uh, click and add to their weapon and it stays on their weapon for 30 minute duration, even through death. And now casters get that in brilliant wizard oil. So what this is, is it's, it's a weapon enchant. It says while applied to target weapon and increases spell damage by up to 36 and increases spell critical chance by 1%. So off the bat, we automatically get 36 more uh, spell damage at, from a consumable. This is an amazing, amazing consumable. Uh, definitely be using this forever. You will be using this for the rest of the game. And then next, we uh, go into the enchants. Similar to Molten Core, they drop off bosses. Um, and the ones that are useful for Shadow Priest are the Cloak Enchant, Enchant Cloak Subtlety. This is, uh, it says, permanently enchant a cloak to decrease threat ca caused by the rarer by 2%. So this isn't really going to um, be seen on our parses or our logs because, you know, we already don't really pull threat, but it is still good to have, and it is technically better than the best current available enchant now, which is the five resistances to cloak. So definitely, definitely use this over that because it is technically better. But the next enchant I'm going to go over is the best one, huge power increase uh spell power increase to us similar to the wizard oil and that is the enchant gloves shadow power it permanently increases the shadow damage done by 20 spell damage and this is available on your gloves this is amazing this is, just imagine if you got an extra piece of gear that randomly just added 20 shadow damage as a, like a ring or a trinket you would love that but this just goes right on top of whatever you're currently using so it's, Pretty much straight up just from consumables and enchants, we're gaining 56 shadow damage right off the bat. The first pieces of gear I'm going to talk about are available outside of the actual dungeon on Karaj itself. So what I mean by that is phase 5 was considered the catch up phase when they released it. They added a bunch of new blues to 5 mans and what they also did was increase the drop rate of a lot of epics that drop in the five mans. So for example, the, the drop rate of Savage Gladiator Chain increased a lot. They increased the drop rate of Hand of Justice. And what uh, for this video and for Shadow Priest uh, especially, they increased the drop rate of the Blade of Eternal Darkness. So this is the dagger that drops off a princess and it has a proc that uh, whenever you land a damaging spell, it gives you a chance to restore 100 health and 100 mana. It uh, Previously had a drop rate of 0.2%. So if you um, have seen people, they have done in the runs in the thousands of numbers to, to get this dagger. But now they actually increased the drop rate to about 2 or 3%, which is a lot more than 0.2. I personally had 700 runs farming this dagger before phase 5. And when they changed it, it took me about 10 to 15 runs to get this dagger. Um, this isn't really used on bosses, but it does have applications, for example, like on Molten Core Trash. I use this in BWL, and I mainly also use this for farming. So, for example, um, sometimes I spec Holy Nova when I farm uh, DM East, if you've watched my previous video about the jump runs. So, um, so Holy Nova is good for killing the actual imps with this dagger because you can kill them before the other plants come. So there are just practical uses to have this dagger. 
it is just a nice dagger to have and now that it doesn't take thousands of runs to get it and it probably will take you about 50 to 60 runs to get i definitely um wanted to mention that so next we have an amazing piece of gear this was added with the uh, catch-up phase like i previously stated and this is the spell weaver's turban so this is a headpiece that drops off of General Draxath, the last boss of UBRS. It gives 9 int, 36 damage, and healing in one hit. Compared to what you are um, using, probably using now, which is the uh, Hexer's Cover, uh, which gives 41 spell damage, you're lo only losing 5 spell damage to gain 9 int and 1 hit. This is an amazing piece. Um, the only downside is it's a little hard to farm because it's off the last boss in UBRS, so you can't really farm it. You have to just do full UBRS runs and other mages and warlocks. And for example, even Boomkins, which I lost a roll to this on, um, want it as well. But this is definitely worth getting, and it is even better than a lot of pieces of gear available to you in Encourage. And then last for uh, gear outside the actual instance, I have the Rock Fury Bracers. So what this is, is this is a piece of gear available from a quest line and a sort of rep grind through the Scenarian Circle now that the um, gates are opened on your server. And um, I'm not going to go into detail how to get these. There's a lot of great guides on YouTube to actually do the grind itself. But why I mention them is they are, these are literal your best in slot game bracers. They give 7 stamina, 27 uh, damage and healing, 1 hit. A lot of people are still using 21 green shadow damage bracers if they're not using bracers of arcane accuracy. So now that these are available in the game and you can just get them on your own time and do it yourself and they're your best in slot game, you should definitely, definitely be going for the Rock Fury bracers. So now that we've talked about the consumables and the enchants and the pieces of gear available outside of the instance, let's talk about gear that's actually available inside the instance. So what I'm going to do similarly to my other phase updates, I'm going to go over each piece of gear piece by piece, and then at the end I'm going to give you a full best in slot gear set and I'm also going to give you what I like to call a realistic best in slot gear set, which is the set of gear that I personally will probably uh, be trying to go for. And it's a lot of pieces that are technically your second bis or just minimally worse than your actual bis, but still very, very good in raids and a lot easier to get. So let's start um, going piece by piece of the gear that I want to highlight. And first, this is the only piece of it that I'm going to talk about from AQ20, and this is the Vestments of the Shifting Sands. So these drop off of Kuranax, they are a chest piece, they give 14 int, 20 stam, 8 spirit, 32 damage and healing, and 1 crit. And the reason I want to highlight this is because sometimes um, you get into a spot in your itemization, and a lot of you, you know, if you have a Nefs tier, this is definitely applying to you, you will be able to replace your Bloodvine chest. And I, you will see a little later on how I'm going to talk about uh, the 2.5 chest and how it is your best in slot when you are able to replace Bloodvine Chest. And this is only minimally worse than your tier 2.5 chest and a lot easier to get. So I just wanted to highlight this from AQ20. And this is the only piece of gear I think from AQ20 that it's worth talking about for Shadow Priests. So first with the gear from AQ40, the first piece we're gonna talk about is the Signet Ring of the Bronze Dragonflight. So for those of you who haven't done this instance before, this is your first time doing this phase, every uh, person that is, enters the instance is offered a quest where it gives you an epic ring in quality, and the quality of the ring goes up and up uh, and increases in power and stats with your reputation with the Brood of Norse Damu, which you just naturally get by killing bosses. There are a couple of quests that you can do that will increase your rep, but similarly to ZG, you just get rep from the killing bosses, so you will eventually get Exalted Reputation. And the Exalted Ring gives you 9 int, 8 stam, 28 damage and healing, and 5 MP5. This is an amazing ring. You will probably use this for a very long time, maybe even never replace it. We'll see how lucky you are. And it is available to everyone. It doesn't drop off a boss, and it's a very good ring. So next... I'm going to talk about the tier 2.5 set in its entirety. So this drops off of bosses in AQ40, but a new thing that is um, introduced is that they drop off of tokens. So similarly to ZG, if you know that they, they 
bosses drop tokens that are available for multiple classes and multiple classes can turn in the tokens and pick the uh, respected piece of gear and uh, so each of these drop off um, of different bosses but you do share them with other classes so I'm gonna go piece by piece a lot of these pieces you will not use in PvE all of them are amazing for PvP. If you did not do the rank 13 grind, I definitely would aim for this set for PvP. I personally want the whole set for PvP because I didn't do the rank 13 grind. But uh, in the context of the video, I will be talking about these pieces specifically for PvE. So the first piece, we're just going to go down the list, is the Foot Wraps of the Oracle, 17 in 20 Stam, 12 Spirit, 21 Damage and Healing, 3 MP5. These are not that great for PvE. You can get the Betrayer's Boots. Malachi's are even better than this. I wouldn't use these for PvE, but for PvP, these are a very chunky piece, a very beefy piece, and definitely worth going for. And let's just take the opportunity here to talk about the set bonus. So the three set is a 20% chance that your heals on others will also heal you for 10% of the amount healed. And the five set is increases the duration of your renew spells by three uh, seconds. So as you see, even though they are damage and healing, and it is, you know, um, stats for a shadow priest the set bonus even assumes that you're going to be healing but the stats are so good i would definitely go for them in pv uh, pve uh, excuse me pvp next is the headpiece the tiara of the oracle 22 int 20 uh stam 16 spirit 28 damage and healing 7 mp5 and 1 percent hit this piece is actually really good for pve comparable if not better than the spellweaver's turban um i Personally, I would probably wear the Spellweaver's Turban over this, but there is a lot of debate on the Shadow Priest Discord about this versus the Spellweaver's Turban, and it's pretty much come down to this is marginally, if if that marginally better, or just the same as the Spellweaver's Turban, but the Spellweaver's Turban is probably a little bit easier to get because it's from a 10-man, and this, um, as you see, you have to share warrior, uh, warrior, mage, and warlock. This will probably be a very competitive piece that everyone's going for in AK40. Next, we have the mantle of the oracle, 20 in, uh, 21 stam, 8 spirit, 20 damage and healing, 3 MP5, and a new thing that is being also introduced in phase 5 is decreases the magical resistances of your spell targets by 10. So this is something else that was added in phase, uh, excuse me, phase 5 by Blizzard. I don't really think this has much applications in PvE. Maybe to certain bosses that have insane shadow resist, you could itemize and wear this over your mantle or something like that. But in all uh, cases, Mantle of the Blackwing Cabal is definitely better than this, and it's probably a lot easier to get because it drops off of the first boss in Blackwing Lair as opposed to dropping off of uh, Visitus and Huhuron in AQ, which are considered two of the hardest bosses and you have to compete with warriors and rogues. So maybe down the line, you'll eventually get this piece and a lot of these pieces when you do a Q enough. But for now, I would aim for other pieces and use your mantle over the uh, this mantle for sure. Next, we have the pants. Uh, these are 24 int, 23 stam, 14 spirit, 33 damage and healing, and six MP5. These are actually sort of decent for PVE if you could itemize the hit and give up the uh, bloodvine. But in all cases, pretty much fell infused leggings are definitely your best in slot game and better, but those are almost impossible to get on a lot of servers for a lot of people. But your flare core are generally better than trousers of the Oracle. But for PvP, again, these are insane. Look at all the int and the stam, and these are just a huge piece for PvP. And last, and what I'm gonna be talking about probably the most about is the vestments of the Oracle. So these drop off of Cthulhu. These are 26 int, 23 stam, 15 spirit, 36 damage and healing, 1 crit, and decreases the magical resistance of your uh, spells b targets by 10. So you'll see um, when I do the full best in slot guide how you can itemize hit where you don't need to use Bloodvine anymore. And in that situation, this is your best in slot for phase 5. But the only downside for this is it drops off of Cthulhu and... You have to compete with mages and warlocks for it, which, you know, like all of these pieces, the uh, most guilds, unless you're in a DKP guild, most guilds are going to give the tokens to the warriors and the mages and the warlocks first because shadow priests don't get no respect. 
and but eventually you will probably be able to get your hands on this and in that case i would definitely definitely use these over the bloodvine chest if you can give up the hit these are very good but pretty hard to get so now that we went over the full tier 2.5 set let's go over individual pieces that drop off of bosses first thing i'm going to highlight uh, drops off this is actually a trash drop um, it's the garb of royal ascension and the reason I wanted to highlight this is just because this is technically, even though marginally, better than your Bloodvine Vest. So this gives 21 stam, 30 damage and healing, and 2 hit. If you look at Bloodvine, it gives, I think off the top of my head, 9 int, but only 27 damage and healing. So, in most cases, losing the 9 int to gain 3 spell damage on, on a piece like this is worth it. And the only other people that would be competing with you for this piece would be, for example, maybe a Warlock Shadow Tank for the Twin Amps fight. But other than that, these will probably fall on your lap eventually and definitely use these over the Bloodbind Vest. Next, we have the Burrower Bracers. So these drop off of Oru and they give 13 in 10 stam 28 damage and healing so these are currently the best and highest uh damage and healing bracers available in the game for shadow priests they are an awesome piece and um you can probably wear these over rock fury if you can afford the hit and by that you would probably have to have a nefs tier and a lot of these other pieces i'm going to go over in a second that are very competitive but it's definitely doable. So if you are hit capped and you can afford to lose your Bloodvine and your Rock Fury, these are technically your best game. But they are only one spell damage higher than Rock Fury. Rock Fury is 27. These are 28. So it's very, very, very marginal. You would be getting one spell damage. In pretty much all cases, Rock Fury is probably better than these. But there are situations where these are probably better than Rock Fury. But it's marginal. And next... Uh, we have the Ring of the Fallen God. So this piece drops off of a token off of Cthune. Uh, similarly to Blackwing Lair and Anixia, the last boss drops the Eye of Cthune, like the head of Anixia, head of Nefarian, which is a quest item that you turn in for a piece of gear. Um, like the other bosses, it is a 100% chance to drop. It always drops, and for casters, it gives this the ring called the Ring of the Fallen God. 6 int, 5 stam, 37 damage and healing, and 1 hit. This ring is insane. This is your best in slot game. Like a, a lot of these other pieces, it, you will be competing with other casters for it, but the fact that it is a 100% chance to drop, and if you're in a guild that can kill Cthune every week, and from what we're seeing, Cthune is killable every week. It's not as hard as it was in, you know, 15 years ago. This will eventually just, you know, it'll be your turn to get this, and it is your best in soft game. Just, you know, rate AQ enough, you will put yourself in a position to get this. And next piece we're going to talk about is the Wand of Karaji Nobility. So this is a sort of cool piece because it drops off a of Bug Trio. And Bug Trio is a new, unique sort of boss fight to Classic where there are three uh, individual bosses with three unique abilities. And the kill order um, affects the loot table. So the last bug you kill, there are... There are pieces of gear that are shared between all three bugs, but each bug um, usually has a unique piece that drops when you kill it last. And in the case of the wand, it drops off of Lord Cree. So you would want your guild to kill Lord Cree last to get this wand. It is your best in slot game wand. You will never replace it because it is better than the Wand of Fates in Naxxramas, which is a wand that mages and warlocks want because it gives one hit. So... Don't be fooled if your guild tries to talk you uh, talk a major warlock getting this. I mean, it's technically okay, but they will replace it, and you will never replace the one of Karachi Nobility. But on the other end of that argument, it is only one damage better than the Touch of Chaos. Touch of Chaos gives 18 damage and healing. This gives 19 damage and healing, so you're only gaining 5 stamina, which doesn't really matter, and 1 damage and healing. So... If you don't get this piece and a Warlock or Mage does get this over you, don't be sad because Touch of Chaos is available and it's only one uh, damage less. So, next piece I'm going to talk about are the Boots of Epiphany. These drop off of the Twin Emps. They are boots that give 19 int, 18 stam, 34 damage and healing. So, 
these are awesome because for a lot of people, um, snowblind shoes similar to fell infused leggings are really hard to get if you're like on me, a server like mine, Alliance Control, World Bosses pretty much, especially Kazik. Horde has sniped a couple of late night Azergos in the past. But Kazakh is really hard, you know, on Grobulus. So, but that could be like that for Azergos on other people's servers for the Snowblind Shoes. So these boots are better than the Betrayer's boots, which were previously previously your second Bisc game. These are now your second Bisc game. 34 damage and healing is awesome, and it is technically more than the Snowblind Shoes, but the, the MP5 on the Snowblind Shoes is worth giving two damage and healing. But if, if you can't get the Snowblind Shoes, these are definitely, definitely worth going for and most mages and warlocks will be using their actual 2.5 uh, pieces over these so these are actually a, a lesser contested piece and definitely worth uh, trying to get these are awesome if you don't have snowblind shoes and they're a uh, four damage upgrade and a lot of more stats than the betrayers boots so these last three pieces i'm going to talk all drop of uh, all drop off of Cthune, and they are all your most competitive pieces and probably the hardest pieces for you to get but these are three of your best in slot game pieces so if you get these in if you're in a dkp guild for example these are the three highest priority pieces that i would be going for because you're never going to replace them first we have the cloak of the devoured 10 int 11 stam 30 damage and healing one hit this cloak is insane um it gives two more spell damage than Cloak of the Broodlord, so it's immediately better, and one hit makes it so much better. But the downside about this is lots of mages and warlocks want this. All mages and warlocks want this. It gives hit, which is a lot more valuable to them than us because of um, our shadow talent. That gives us 10% hit, so we can itemize a lot better without hit and they need as much hit as they can get and this is like their Bisson game as well most of them wear cloak of consumption which this is an immediate upgrade to, for cloak of consumption so you know that highly highly competitive piece but your best in slot game and if you're in a dkp guild one of the first pieces i would probably try to save up for are this and the um eye of Cthun. next up we have the dark storm gauntlets these drop off of Cthun as well 15 in 19 stamp 37 damage and healing and one hit so these give six less spell damage than the ebony flame gauntlets which give 43 but the fact that these give a lot of int a lot of stam and one hit makes it so you can itemize better and eventually replace your blood vine which is going to be your goal and the fact that these let you itemize better in those places makes the six uh, spell damage loss almost non-effective if not it's an increase with the hit but like i talked about with the prior piece all mages and warlocks are going to want this this is a super competitive piece and it's going to be highly highly contested but it is your best in slot game and the last piece i'm going to talk about individually is the eye stock waste cord again this drops off of thune nine int ten stam one crit 41 damage and healing Fire Maw's Clutch gives 35 damage and healing and some MP5, but this gives you a crit, which, you know, it's minimal, but it does technically increase your damage, you know, and uh, 41 damage and healing, 41 is more than 35, so this is technically your best game, but this is like a um, mana igniting cord on crack, so all mages are going to want this, and all warlocks are going to want this, especially the fact that this is one of the pieces that uh, doesn't um, coincide with 2.5 tokens so they can still wear their full 2.5 set and the eye stock waist cord so this is probably going to be the hardest piece for you to get but all these pieces off of, off of Cthune are amazing they are all your best in slot game pieces and if you're in a DKP guild these are the three pieces of gear that you are going to want to save up for the most now that we've gone over each piece of gear individually let's look at the set of gear so the first one i'm going to go over is the phase five best in slot so all these pieces of gear are currently the best available piece of gear to you in the game in the current phase so the first piece we're going to go over is the hexer's cover i only put this here really because with this set of gear you can itemize to replace the spellweaver's turban or the tier 2.5 helm and this 
still is the highest available uh, damage and healing helmet in the game. So the fact that I have all my hit in other places means I can game the damage and healing over the turban. So I just put the Hexer's cover here because it technically is your phase 5 bis still. Next piece I'm not going to talk about pretty much at all because I've been talking about it for almost a year now is the Choker of the Fire Lord. And if you've been keeping up with my videos, you will see that I told you back then that you will never replace this and it is still true. You will never replace this. This is your best in slot game and get this off of rag. You'll never replace it. It's a great piece, your best piece. Next, we have the Mantle of the Blackwing Cabal. This is uh, off of Razor Gore, Blackwing Layer. Bis, um, if not Bis game, it's your second Bis game. The only thing I think better than this is like literally one or two damage more. But this is for all um, sakes of the video. This is pretty much your Bis game, and it's awesome. You will wear this for a very long time, if not forever. Next, Cloak of the Devoured. We just went over this. It's your Bis game. You should try to get this cloak. Then we have the Vestments of the Oracle. So the reason I'm wearing the Vestments of the Oracle with this current set of gear you have one, two, three, four, five, six. So you are hit capped without having Bloodvine, and you can replace your Bloodvine chest with the Vestments of the Oracle. Next, we have the Rock Fury Bracers, uh, the Dark Storm Gauntlets. We just talked about all these pieces of gear. No need to go into them in detail again, but these are great pieces, uh, BIS game pieces. They all give you hit. The Eyestock Waste Cord is your BIS game belt gives more damage than the fire moss clutch like we just went over the fell infused leggings and the snowblind shoes so I, the reason i put these here is because these are technically your best in slot game um and they are amazing pieces the fell infused leggings this is the holy grail of shadow priest pieces this piece is insane and the snowblind shoes same thing amazing pieces but they drop off of world bosses so they're pretty hard to get Next, for the rings, I have the Band of Dark Dominion. The reason I put the Band of Dark Dominion over the Signet is because it gives five more damage and healing. It's really good, and it's uh, the fact that you're gaining damage and healing in other places in MP5 and other places means the MP5 on the Signet ring is not so great, and it, you can afford to lose it and gain the extra five damage from the Band of Dark Dominion. Then we have the Ring of the Fallen God. This is one of your best pieces ever. This piece is insane. You will never replace it. Just read the thing, and you'll see why. Uh, for the trinkets, Toep, it's pretty self-explanatory. And Neft's Tear, this piece is what makes opening up and replacing a Bloodvine possible. This piece of gear opens up itemization for you so much. It's probably the most important piece for Shadow Priests to get in the entire game. Um, I've been saying you should save your DKP for the pieces off of Cthune, but if you're in a DKP guild and you do not have a Nefts tier, this should be your number one priority because it opens up the availability of other pieces of gear to you. It is amazing. For the weapons, uh, Lockamir, Ilromanthus, huge, huge um, upgrade. This is a huge upgrade from Anathema, but um, on the other side, it's still a pretty competitive piece because Shamans and Druids do want it. Because the only thing um, they would want over this pretty much is the Cthune Mates, which I, you know, that is going to be an insane piece for all healers. But this is still your best in slot for Phase 5, but you will replace this in Phase 6 with the End of Dreams. Uh, Master Dragon Slayer's Orb, this is from the Neff Head. This is your best in slot game offhand. If you have a Lockamir, um, you should definitely be using this. And the Wand of Karaji Nobility, this is the best in slot game wand, and you will never replace this. So now that we've gone over the Phase 5 full best in slot uh, gear, let's go over what I like to call the realistic best in slot gear. So this, these are pieces of gear that are marginally or minimally worse than the actual BIS, but still really, really good and a lot easier to get. So for the realistic best in slot guide, we're going to go piece by piece again. We're going to start off with the Spellweaver's Turban. Um, this set of gear has no nefts tier because I, like I said in the beginning of the video, this is the set of gear that I personally am going to try to go for, and I do not have a nefts tier. If I ever get a nefts tier, this will change drastically, but I don't have one, so I'm going to be wearing the Spellweaver's Turban for my hit. It's just a huge piece, great piece, pretty easy to get. Um, 
just do some 10 mans and hope you can roll and win for it. You know, who knows if you have a lot of friends and you can reserve it for yourself, do that. But definitely try to get this. Next, we have the Choker. The reason I have this in the Realistic Biss is because the fact that it's just been around the game so long and it's always going to be your Biss, you should probably have this by now. Um, Mantle, the same thing. This has been in the game for a while. It drops off the first boss. And now the fact that Mages and Warlocks are going to be wanting to wear their 2.5 over this means that this becomes a lot more open for Shadow Priests. And if you don't have a Mantle of the Blackwing Cabal, it'll be a lot easier to get one uh, now that AQ is up. Now I have Cloak of the Broodlord. Um, instead of the Cloak of the Devoured, I personally am in a Loot Council Guild, so it'll be a very long time before I have an opportunity to see the Cloak of the Devoured. So I will be using the Cloak of the Broodlord for a long time, but the good thing about that is it's only two damage worse than the Cloak of the Devoured, so it's not like it's a huge, huge upgrade for me. Then we have the Bloodvine Vest. Um, I just put this here because I'm currently using it. I'm probably going to be using it for a while. If I ever get the Garb of Ascension, that's great, but I'm not going to trip over it because it's a minimal upgrade and um, Bloodvine Vest I have, so that's good. Next, we have the Rock Fury Bracers. These are your best game, and you can get this on your own time with your own resources. If you don't have Rock Fury Bracers, um, you should definitely plan on getting them because there's no other best in slot game piece available to you outside of a dungeon. Uh, this is the only one, so it's definitely worth going for this one. Then we have the Ebony Flame Gloves. Um, these give more damage than the uh, Cthulhu Gloves, but the Cthulhu Gloves give the hit, like I said before, but they're super competitive. Most of these pieces I'm using because um, in a... I am personally am in a loot council guild, and in most loot council guilds, they will be looking at mages and warlocks over shadow priests because the pieces you want are insane for all three, but mages and warlocks do a lot more damage than shadow priests. So, you're probably going to be using ebony flame gloves, unless you're in a DKP guild for a long time. But, the fact that we have the 20 shadow damage uh, enchant now, 63 Damage and healing for one piece of gear is insane. So don't be sad that you'll be using an Ebony Flame. Fire Moss Clutch, just like the gloves, just like the cloak. Super competitive piece, um, but marginally worse. So don't be unhappy if you wear your Fire Moss Clutch for a long time. Then we have the Bloodvine Leggings. I, we still need the hit. We don't have a Nefs tier. Um, these are great for that. So uh, I will be using the Bloodvine Leggings and the Bloodvine Vest probably for a very long time. Then I have the Boots of Epiphany. I am fortunate enough to have a pair of Snowblind shoes, so I personally will be wearing the Snowblind shoes, but for the realistic best-in-slot guide, I decided to add the Boots of Epiphany because they are uh, probably the least contested piece for you in AQ40 and possibly one of the first pieces you will get from a loot council because they are not that con uh, contested. So uh, great piece to use. More more spell damage than Snowblind, though, so don't be unhappy if you're using these as well. Then I have, for here I put the Signet of the Bronze Dragonflight. I honestly don't know why I did this. I probably should have put the Band of Dark Dominion. It's probably better. You know what? Let's just change that right now. Yeah, we're going to use Band of Dark Dominion over the Signet. I just I just think that the, the damage is better than the MP5. Then we have the Ring of the Fallen God. So for the realistic best-in-slot guide the reason i decided to put this in the realistic one is be the fact that it is a hundred percent chance to drop so if you raid aq enough with your guild consistently you will eventually get this because one person gets it every week then we have the zhc for the realistic guide i put the zhc toe up is better but not everyone has a toe up but everyone can get a ZHC, and it's even argued that ZHC is better than Toep for Shadow Priest on short fights because of the way snapshotting works with Mind Flay. So ZHC is, is really good for Shadow Priests. And then the Briarwood Reed, the, you know, the worst Nefs tier by a mile. Going to be using this until I get a Nefs tier, or any of you out there, until you get a Nefs tier. But it's still a decent piece, but you definitely want a Nefs tier over it. But for the realistic best in slot guide, we put the Briarwood Reed. We have Anathema as our weapon. I th uh, technically, Staff of the Shadow Flame is better, but it's still a pretty contested piece. It's still really good for casters. So Anathema, I just put here because it's good old faithful Anathema. You'll be using this, you know, for a long time, uh, if not 
forever in Orgrimmar or Ironforge for your RP sets. And last, for the wand, I put the wand of Karaji Nobility. I put this over the Touch of Chaos just because it's one, literally one damage more and it's another less contested piece than the cloak, the gloves, and the belt. So that's the uh, f uh, realistic best in slot guide. Hope you all enjoyed my full phase 5 guide for Shadow Priests. Now that AQ is out and the next phase coming out is Naxxramas, it's really Shadow Priest's time to shine. They gain huge, huge power jump, and the next couple of uh, phases are going to be huge for Shadow Priest, so I'm super excited for that. I hope you all have fun if your gates have opened in AQ. If not, I hope they open soon. If you guys have any suggestions or questions about itemization, please feel free to leave them in the comments. Also, a couple of you have been asking me to do a PvP guide for Shadow Priest, so that is definitely something I will uh, be working on next. Uh, if you like Shadow Priest's content and you want me to put out more Shadow Priest content like this, please leave a like, leave a comment, leave a subscribe. And just like always, I'll see you on Azeroth, guys.